Good morning. I want to thank you for taking some time out to watch today's video. In it, we'll talk about handling semantic DLP incidences with your ticketing system. My name is Jonathan Jesse. I head up the security team at ITS. And we're going to cover uh, using a ticketing system to work DLP incidences. The agenda for today that we will cover in this video is the four things listed on the screen. The problem, the solution, the software, and then the demo. So let's go ahead and jump into the problem. What is the problem that we are trying to solve? So this is an example or a screenshot of my DLP demo system. It's uh, probably not as cluttered or, or as busy as you, as your DLP system is. But what we have is a whole bunch of incidences that need to be remediated. In fact, I'm just looking at the discover data at rest portion of my DLP demo system. I've got a lot of things that need to be cleaned up and resolved and remediated. Everything currently now has a status of new, but we need to triage these incidences. Maybe some of them are false positives, maybe some of them are not, and we want to work through them. So once again, the problem. Potentially you have, no, not, not even potentially, you have a large number of DLP incidences. And sometimes those incidences can be difficult to track within the semantic DLP system. Three real problems that we have is that there's no assignment of an incident. Sally Stevens is working this particular incident. She is tracking things down and she is working on remediating them. While the DLP system can track notes and other information about the incident being worked or generated, it's oftentimes hard to get that information out from a reporting point of view. And then finally, if I need to contact that person, I have to, um, who generated that incident, I have to send them an email, and then do I edit the notes to reflect that I contacted that? Maybe my ticketing system has all of this information built into it. Then finally, you know, once we add other people into remediating and seeing incidences, we have to um, perhaps create complex security roles. What if we could just leverage our existing ticketing system to be able to handle um, those? So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage everything that is built within the ticketing system, whether that's a, a routing engine, a time tracking system, uh, assignment, categorization, all of that, and then we're going to handle those. So how are we going to do this? Well, new within DLP 11.6 or higher, the reporting API within Semantic DLP has the ability to write back to an incident. So in previous versions of DLP, we could only um, view the incident. We couldn't change the status of the incident or change a note or change files or do anything, interact with that incident. So we're going to leverage the reporting API within DLP to communicate to a ticketing system. So this is an example of what the DLP incident uh, looks like from a reporting API. Now, this web front end is something that ITS created, and we are going to do some manual creation of incidences. Now, if you remember, um, we also did another video about using or leveraging a routing engine to make decisions to call other items such as other workflows, etc. And we can do that um, to call this incident generation system automatically. Um, what we have set up for this demo purpose is to uh, generate these manually. As you can see, we've built into the solution, into our creation of a ticket, the ability to create a ticket within the semantic workflow system. So if you are leveraging Service Desk, which is built on workflow, we could create a Service Desk incident, a semantic Service Desk incident. Um, because we also are a partner of ServiceNow, we are going to create a ServiceNow incident as well. If you're using Landesk or some other ticketing system, you could easily um, extend that. We could help you extend that to generate uh, incidences within other, maybe perhaps even homegrown uh, incidences or ticketing systems. So as you can see, within 
Now you're looking at a screenshot of ServiceNow and you can see that I have incident, a DLP incident, I have information from that into my ticketing system. Then in this case, Aaron can work that ticket. He can make his notes and change things and contact the owner and all of this stuff right through ServiceNow without leaving that interface. All of that communication is tracked all of the configuration is tracked, everything is set and good to go. So the software, well, what are we going to use? Uh, Semantic DLP 11.6 or higher, uh, Semantic Workflow, uh, DLP Incident API, that is, which is documented, a connector that we created at ITS Partners to connect the DLP system into the DLP, uh, sorry, the DLP system into your ticketing software. And then in my demo, I'm actually going to show the ServiceNow interface, um, but we do have it connected to Semantic Service Desk. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the demo. So let me go ahead and flip screens here. Okay, so this is my ServiceNow interface, and you can see I have a whole bunch of stuff. Once again, it's another demo interface with all kinds of tickets and stuff in there but you can see here that I have um, a ticket here for Aaron a ticket created by me and a couple of other DLP incident type items so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy here for a minute and I clicked on the wrong part so hold on So as you can see, I'm looking in this case at a DLP incident 2143, and it's a request. We filled in the category and the subcategory automatically. Um, impact, urgency, and priority. Now those can all be adjusted based on the status that is the sorry the severity of that incident that was generated. And then I can track all of my notes here and tasks. Everything that ServiceNow is set up to do can be done. Let's go ahead and take a look at an incident. I'll generate um, the incident into Service Desk and walk through that, and then we'll go from there. So here is my DLP system, right? As you can see, this is an endpoint incident. It's incident 2122. We need to remember that for later. And I've got all kinds of information. Once again, this is demo data with a bunch of demo cards in it, um, etc. that's triggered. Um, for those of you that are used to DLP, this is all your, your standard stuff that you have in the system. So I need to take a look. So if we have the status of new and the severity is high, and we have some history, right? Um, some notes, nothing, nothing big, nothing fancy within the system. So go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and open the ticketing system. Well first before I get there, let's take a look at the API. So this is what is all being called back from an incident point of view. We're using the XML side of things um, to generate everything. And Like I said, the incident API is very well documented. It is in your um, it is in your uh, document that you get from Semantics. So if I click on here in your documentation, all right, you can see all of the web services that are available, and then we can take a look at them. Now let's do look at the automation point of things. So let me grab that. Wrong link. Apologize about that. All right, so as I mentioned, this is a kind of a manual process because it's easier to demo a manual process than an automatic one. Um, but we're going to walk through what it looks like. And we could tie this to either the routing engine that we did earlier. Um, there's another video on our website that you can watch. Or we can look at, um, we can do it manual to show this off. So I am going to look, remember what incident number it was, incident ID 2122. 21, 22. Let's go ahead and select that incident. OK. 
Okay, and you can see all of the information that is pulled back by the API. Now, one thing I want to call out here is at no point are we actually including the confidential data. All right, so let's go back to DLP. None of the credit cards show up. All right, so we're not storing any of that those violations. Um, the DLP system does not release that. But you can see here that I have all of the other information here. So I uh, get the incident ID, right, 2122, the source, the file name, the file path, the file owner, all of that stuff from within the DLP system. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to, if you see the severity is high, and let's go ahead and change the status here. Um, it will be escalated. And then let's add some notes. So the please investigate this incident. Helps if I can type as it is escalated. Okay, go ahead and save this. And then we're going to go ahead and create a ticket. Now, once again, this is manual, but can be automated. We'll create a service now incident. And it's going to um, ask me to close this web page. Once again, kind of part of the automation or the manual process that we have. And then if I take a look at this incident again, what should happen, and it might be a timing part of you, is that the status will change. Yep, the status did change to escalate. And if I look here in the history, you can see that the note was added, the data owner email was set, all of that information was changed within the system. Now, you see that it was submitted by workflow, and we can change that to the person that is doing the escalation or the submission from the, uh, from the web page, but in this case, we set it as a particular user. You can also see my notes it says, please investigate this incident as it has been investigated, or as it has been escalated. So I'm not the greatest um, ServiceNow expert, so apologize if I have to uh, poke around here for a minute to find this incident here. So right here, DLP incident 2122 requires remediation. So let's go ahead and take a look at what shows up within the system. So remember, category is request. It's a DLP subcategory, DLP remediation. And then the description of what needs to happen, um, the DLP incident ID, and everything flows right into your ticketing system that you have. And you can see that this node information was entered right into the system. So let's go ahead and resolve this incident. And it will resolve back into our ticketing system. So I've gone ahead and I've contacted the file owner. I've got them to remove this field. Um, got some additional comments. So let's go ahead um, and edit our ticket. Worked with customer to... Clean up large file, closing ticket. And let's add some additional notes. Contacted customer. He wasn't aware. This file was saved on his desktop. Deleted the file and moved from recycle bin resolving incident all right cool so um, I'm gonna go ahead and resolve this incident if I click down things correctly ah Keep on forgetting closed code, closed notes, solve permanently. Then once again, all of these codes and things that I'm forgetting to file up, uh, fill out, 
is all dependent on your instance of service now or service desk or something like that. All right, so now this ticket, the state is resolved. Um, I've worked the incident within my ticketing system and then we have to wait a couple of minutes, but we will see this status change to resolve within the ticketing system. All right. So once again, status resolved. Cool. Well, let's take a look exactly what, what happened. Okay. So note added, status change to resolve, the API was executed, note added, all of that information was added based on that API. Now if I look at the note within the system, right, resolved by jjesse at itsdelivers.com, Work with customer to clean up large file, closing ticket, right? So all of those notes were added into the system. So this demo shows the um, power of the DLP incident API to work within my ticketing system. Once again, gives me the ability to deal with routing and assignments and configuration and everything that I need to do within the DLP system that can be a challenge with a system that already exists, right? I've spent all kinds of time, energy, resources, customizing my ticketing system. In this case, ServiceNow, whatever you guys use. And it's got workflow, it's got routing, it's got notification, it's got SLAs, it's got everything built into the system for me. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we use the, um, the DLP API workflow to lever to remediate resolve and update DLP incidences. Once again I want to thank you for watching this video. My name is Jonathan Jesse. I have the security team. If you have any questions feel free to send me an email. I was on the slide at the beginning and would love to talk to you and maybe do a demo within um, uh, more specific for you and your team at a later time. Thanks and have a great day.